And so, grasping, how does it work? Ah, I lost something. Never mind, I'll use something else. So, let's say this is very precious to me. It's gold or diamond, or it's the greatest truth in the universe. And because it's precious, I hold on to it like this. And if I do this for any length of time, what happens? Two things happen. The first thing, I get a cramp in the arm. <laughs> and this is a sign of grasping, is tension. And so that's what I want to talk this morning is about signal. How can we be more aware of the signal of how does it feel to be creatively engaged? How does it feel to grasp? And what's the problem with grasping? So that's the first thing, tension. But the second thing which we have with this is that when I grasp at this like that, I cannot use my hand for anything else. So I'm actually stuck to what I'm grasping at. So then what is the solution? First solution, Buddhist, long ago, cut the hand. <laughs> Ascetic practices. Then, I mean, you don't grasp. Personally, I think this is a little drastic. <laughs> Second solution, get rid of the object. And this is something that the advertisement industry has really understood. The process of grasping and how it works. So you see a shop and you think, mm, it's like the thing is saying, come, come, come. You really want me. You have to have me yesterday. You know, the latest iPhone 46 or the latest iPad 25 or whatever it is. Instagram, or there is a new one I recently heard about. So, but the thing is, the, the, the thing is not there. The grasping is not in the object. The object just arises upon condition. So the problem is not the object. And so I would say that the meditation process is a process of releasing, of opening our hand. So the object is still there, but we can move it. There is freedom. Because a process of grasping works in this way. You come into contact, you have the feeling tone. We don't have to talk the time to talk about this, so it's very interesting. You have the feeling tone and you identify. It's very important to see that it's not moving. <laughs> This is a film. <laughs> We're still total grasping here. <laughs> this is a film of 10 minutes. Ah, we're moving here. So, I hope we won't stay there. <laughs> Great, we're moving. He is moving too. So, uh, you have the, the grasping. You identify. You have very much to see that the grasping and identification come together. You identify, you limit yourself to what you grasp at, and then the big problem with grasping is you magnify. Let's say you have a problem at the office. Somebody said something or does something and you're really upset. That guy always does this and he's really terrible. I can't stand it. But you don't do anything about it. But you think about it. You go home, you think about it, you eat, you think about it, you go to bed, you think about it. But the guy did not ask to be in your head. You are grasping negatively at the person. It's very important to see that we grasp positively, I want. We grasp also negatively, I don't want. And there is this two side effect of grasping, proliferation, an exaggeration. We have this beautiful bouquet there. So you're all sitting here, and you can see this bouquet. Ooh, nice bouquet. And you can come, be aware of the bouquet. I love this ikebana. I love this flower arrangement. Ah, <gasps> oh, if only I could have this flower in my garden. 
but to have this flower in my garden, I need a greenhouse. How am I going to go to have a greenhouse? Should I rob the bank? <laughs> so you're not with the beauty of the flower anymore. You are in the proliferation of the thing itself. Oh, you see the flower arrangement. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful. I am such a lousy flower arranger. I really can't do this. Why can't I do this? Other people can do it. I'm a hopeless person. I never do anything in my life. <laughs> so just from seeing, you know, contact, feeling tone with the flower arrangement, you go into this huge thing. And I think this is important to see a signal of grasping is proliferation. And another signal of grasping is exaggeration. Something, you see something. Once I had this experience, and that's why I shift to creative engagement. I was taking care of my grandmother, who was very old, because my mother had a little time off. And so in the morning, I go to see grandma. Ha, how are you, grandma? And she seemed OK, a little confused. So I go to the kitchen to prepare breakfast. And then I realize that actually grandma had a little problem with feces. And they're all over the place. And I walked in it. And I went to the kitchen with it and back. And I see it. <gasps> and then I saw I had a choice. Either I could grasp get upset at me, at grandma, at the universe, and it would kind of be relatively unpleasant and uncompassionate. Or I could creatively engage. Oh, this has happened. What do I need to do? And I was amazed. In less than an hour, it was cleaned up. And I was at peace, and I was kind to grandma. And that's what I mean by creative engagement. Creative engagement helps us to be stable and open, and also help us to creatively engage, because we are not going to magnify. This is a problem with grasping, is that we're going to magnify, we're going to go in abstraction, and we cannot use our creative potential in abstraction. This is what is tricky. So in a way, when we meditate, and of course you're distracted, this is fine. This is a good opportunity to see how do I grasp, how do I identify, how I distract myself. It's good information. But every time we come back to the breath, to the sound, to loving kindness, to whatever it is, we come back to this experience, the whole of the experience. Instead, of grasping at something, going into the exaggeration or proliferation of it, and not being there. <laughs>